I've always wanted to know how a competition chopper could really perform. So I have here the Cold Steel Jimmy Slash competition chopper. And what is this brute made out of? A 0.31 inch thick all the way through slab of CPM 3V steel that is 10 inches long with a convex edge. And we have our own mini competition laid out for us today to blast through with this tool. So how to do, well, what do you think? So it's a chopping knife, so it should obviously perform exceptionally well in chopping, regardless if you want to start practicing for a blade sport, if you maybe want to get into blade competitions, but you don't really want to invest in like a custom build yet, and you just want to kind of hone your skills, this potentially has that capability, or just as a wood chopper. I mean, it's going to do what you would expect it to because it weighs 28.7 ounces. Now, the balance point is going to be at about two inches forward, right where you see this ever so slight milling, which is for like weight balance and weight distribution right there is about where the balance point is on the blade. Now, with that said, I wanted to see how it would do in finer work. You know, just because it can blast through stuff, can it still do some finesse? And I was really pleased that I could absolutely do feather sticks very easily with this. It got amazing, amazing curls, actually. I was, I was kind of shocked. I was like, eh, let's see. And I was able to do that without much difficulty. Even though the balance is forward, the way the handle ergonomics are designed makes it for a relatively easy task for a heavy, large, forward weighted knife and then just cordage you know just different basic other utility i just wanted to kind of see what it could do and I, I, it was surprisingly good at those type of tasks which in blade competitions you do have to do fine work as well going through certain um like t tubes cardboard tubes you know things like that tennis balls those type of things so it can't just be like an axe it has to be able to perform better than that now for clarification this is a high flat grind you can see the portion right there, and then it goes flat, goes all the way to the edge. Then the edge is convex. So it's not like a full convex. The edge, probably about, I'd say, maybe an eighth, maybe a little bit higher than that, more than an eighth, is convexed there, meaning that it's going to be extremely durable while still maintaining a nice sharp edge for an extended period of time. Meaning that if you are gonna actually use this tool versus just using it as like a display piece, you gotta know how to resharpen convex edges. Now, after all the use, let's just see how the edge is holding up all the way to the tip. <laughs> That's awesome. That's impressive. I mean, you would hope so with, yep, all the way, with a convex edge and 3V steel, you would hope that it'd be holding up to abuse like that, and it absolutely does. And if you love this type of blade content, I invite you to hit that like button and to consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Make sure to hit that bell icon so that you can be notified every week when I put up new gear content just like this, help you see pros and cons of gear and equipment, what their capabilities and limitations are, so that you can better stay equipped and prepared for whatever life throws your way. Now the blade is obviously impressive, but handle ergonomics on a chopper like this have to be dialed in. And we're gonna address that in just a moment, but before we do, I wanna give a quick shout out to one of our regular sponsors here at the channel, which is LA Police Gear. Now I've been so glad to have LA Police Gear as a regular sponsor here at the channel for going on two years, and I'm glad to regularly partner with them because of the massive variety of really well-established gear that myself and many of you use on a daily basis, giving you and me, the user, reliable gear to choose from 
regardless if it's a day at the range, our everyday carry systems that we're updating, or days in the backcountry on outdoor adventures. But LA Police Gear's own brand of gear and equipment also really excels, and I wanna highlight specifically the Terrain Stealth series of packs that I've recently tested out two of them and been very impressed with because you're getting a lot of capability for a budget-friendly price point, and it's hard to find all of the features as well as materials in models at this price point. You usually have to sacrifice many of those other key features or materials, but LA Police Gear is able to accomplish both and give us a really well-balanced messenger bag, sling bag, and backpack. So guys, I'll have a link in the description below this video over to the LA Police Gear website, as well as my exclusive 10% off promo code that you can apply site-wide towards your purchase. So borrowing my wife's little magnet hook here, just so we can see where the tang is. It goes right there, and it goes whoosh, all the way to the end. So this is a full tang all the way through Let's just show right there, which is excellent. So then it seems to have a polymer core. Right there, I can see these two little sleeves of plastic, polymer, synthetic of some kind. And then you have their, was it Crayx? Crayton. Crayton rubberized handle there. It is five inches long. What we have is, this is great, a girth from top to bottom of like 1.3 inches. The neck is like 1.2 and tapers slightly there. And then the side thickness is a 0 0.1, or excuse me, one inch on the maximum thickness there. And then 0 0.8 on the two little tapering points. So, I mean, it's massive. Got great texturing, ribbing all the way around does not create a hot spot from all the swinging and using. Got great guard control right there. It locks you into place with plenty of real estate out the back and then that huge bird beak. But again, all craton and this nice, Cray X, whatever goes like that. So, I mean, you're really, even if you're back here, you're locked in, it's not going to create any hot spots. And then you got those two tubes flow through tubes to give you lanyard hole, front lanyard hole, which is how most competition choppers, you know, use and participate in their competitions. So excellent ergonomics feels very warm to the touch and does not create hot shot spots and absorbed the shock well with all of the hard swinging and chopping that i was doing hopefully you can pick it up on frame even though it is a cleaver design like competition blades are this does have an ever so gradual sweep up there and you can definitely you know stick it into a stump on that quarter portion right there and i was able to penetrate and get through certain material like meat or vegetables, fruit, I was able to pierce it without much difficulty because of that 90 degree angle of the edge right there. Now it's not gonna stab like the 12 inch Storm Vector from Topps knives. And this is really one of the only few knives that even came to my mind. So the Storm Vector is still larger, but it's gonna be a quarter inch thick. It's got a high flat grind, you know, no convexing or anything like that, full tank construction. And uh, 1095 steel versus 3V. 3V is much tougher and will hold its edge better than 1095, but just kind of wanted to run that in. And also reminds me of the Ontario SP8 Survival Machete. Just kind of has similar vibes, even though, again, quarter inch, low flat grind. This is going to be way more precise, much better for carving. Finer work if you are, you know, thinking of that way. The Ontario is much more just like a wedge and good for chopping batoning, that's about it. Speaking of batoning, this can absolutely split whatever you would need to. I spanned, I think it was about an eight inch log that was pretty brutal to get through, but it was able to do it and most knives would not be able to tackle that size of a log. It does have a 90 degree spine in several places for those of you who are considering this as like a go-to outdoor tool. This thing goes currently for as low as I've seen, 450 up to $500 is the average going rate currently. That is something you are definitely going to have to consider whether or not that is worth throwing down. Now, if this was made in the USA at that price, I'd have zero things to say, but it is made in Taiwan. Now, Cold Steel's Taiwanese factories do excellent work in producing excellent quality control blades for us for years at this point. So you'll have to determine for yourself, is this worth putting as a collector piece, using or not? Cold Steel did hook me up with this model so I could test it out, show you guys pros, cons, help you determine if it is something to collect or start using or not. I will have links in the description below this video if you are interested in this tool. So the scabbard is much like many other competition she's in that you're desheathing it, using it, and then putting it and kind of carrying it away. There is no belt attachment anywhere on here. We have one run of stitching. We got rivets all the way around. No drainage hole, you know, just kind of square, blocky. I mean, it keeps it in place. 
not a lot of rattle, good large button snap. I mean, it's just kind of, it's just super basic, which is what they're kind of intended to be. It would have been nice to have like a removable belt loop for those of you who want to use this maybe around camp or something like that. But I mean, I don't know who's going to go on a hike with this on their belt. So it follows in the tradition of sport knives, but it would have been great to have some form of belt attachment that is removable for those who want it. So here's the deal. It's absolutely not for everyone, but it's large, it's wild, it's ridiculous, and it brings a smile to your face every time you swing it. All at the same time. So if you're in to blade sports, blade competitions, and maybe you want to get started or just have fun with your buddies, or if you see value in the collectability of this style of tool, I mean, there is a lot that this tool offers, and Jimmy obviously knows what he's doing more than I do when it comes to blade competitions. And so this absolutely, from what I would use and have experience with, definitely fits the bill. But I look forward to hearing from you guys. What's your take? What's your thoughts on this Jimmy Slash competition chopper from Cold Steel? Always appreciate you guys spending time with me today, you blade lovers and blade addicts. Look forward to hearing your thoughts and your comments. Always appreciate it. I invite you to check out the other video popping up and to subscribe. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.